1,000 kilometers west of Chennai, formerly Madras, in the Bay of Bengal are the Andaman and neighboring Nicobar Islands, an archipelago of 572 idyllic individuals that are actually the tops of submerged peaks of a range that extends from Myanmar to Indonesia. Way back, the British used the Andaman Islands as a penal colony. Remains of this period can be found on Ross Island, which served as the administrative capital of the region from 1858 to 1941. Nature has taken a strong hold. Only the names on the graves are the telling reminders of that recent past. But the sands of time and plant roots have done their work. An illustrious colonial period has faded into the past. The statue of Mahatma Gandhi in the middle of Port Blair, the capital city of the Andaman Islands, is a striking symbol of India's independence in 1947. But after that, much changed. The borders of the Andaman Islands were opened up. People from all over India migrated here and now form a major component of the local population. The islands extend 800 kilometers north-south and are diligently defended by India's navy against threats to the valuable coral reefs and tropical fishing. The Coast Guard patrols the long coastline constantly. All these naval and Coast Guard vessels used to be maintained in the Floating Dry Dock Navy No. 1 or FDN1 in Port Blair until it sank. Naval architect Hans Schiet explains. As a result of a control panel blackout of the ballast system back in November last year, floating dry dock FDN1 in Port Blair lost operational control. The ballast system did not then work properly. They had to pump increasing volumes of water aft to hold trim, such that eventually the whole floating dry dock simply sank. A Weissmuller salvage team from Eimauden, the Netherlands, flew in to meet the fully equipped and manned salvage vessel Perdana Sakti, mobilized from Singapore. Their operational base is the lively capital of the Andaman Islands, Port Blair, a peaceful and vibrant commercial home to Hindus, Sikhs, Muslims and Christians. Every now and again, one sees a taste of the distant colonial past. On the street in the Andamans, one can hear the many different languages of the people of the Indian subcontinent. Hindi, Bengali, Tamil and Punjabi. It's no surprise, the region is called Little India. Most of what is for sale on the markets of Port Blair comes from the nearby islands or is brought in from the Indian mainland. Forests are the green gold of the islands, but now small-scale agriculture is taking on a significant economic function. Poverty on the Andamans there is not, but the tradition of hard work there certainly is. And women do much of it. Tourism is also now becoming an important earner. The Mahatma Gandhi National Marine Park is rich in sea turtles, tropical fish and a huge variety of precious corals. So this is FDN1, 189 meters long, 40 meters wide and 15 meters high, down about 25 meters deep on the bottom. Under the all-seeing eye of the colorful local fish, Weissmuller salvage divers do their initial inspection work. They have to familiarize themselves with the local situation to ensure a feasible and safe salvage plan. 
die bakboord. En dan gaan we door naar uh, bakboordcenter bakboord Wing. The salvage officer and naval architect discuss the preliminary approach. A sunken dry dock underwater for some three months and weighing over eight and a half thousand tons. It will not be easy. The preliminary salvage plan is explained by the naval architect. We have developed a plan to raise the dock. It will involve pumping air into some of its many ballast tanks for buoyancy. We will use the center tanks for this and use the wing tanks for water ballast to control stability, deflection and trim. The manhole covers of the center tanks are firstly removed and brought on deck the salvage vessel. Holes will be cut into these and 3.7 meter long, 25 centimeter diameter pipes welded onto them. The pipes will then be fitted with a hose link and air connection. This construction is called a hydrant. A total of 12 of these hydrants will be prepared. When this work is completed, the covers will be installed back on the dock deck. The arrangement is to be seen here on the left of the drawing. Weissmuller Salvage brings in many specialist divers to ensure the complex work is done safely and fast. Here, they use the so-called Kirby Morgan system that consists of a CCTV camera and lighting mounted on the diver's mask. Firstly, the 175 kilogram hydrant is hoisted overboard with the help of the installation boom and brought accurately into position. The vessel is now directly over one of the manholes on the dock floor. Divers are always present to help guide operations. On board, the work of the diver is tracked precisely. The closed circuit television camera can film whatever the onboard team want to see, even in bad visibility. The hydrant is maneuvered into position. After the closure edge has been cleared and cleaned, the hydrant is lowered into the manhole and secured to the deck of the dry dock. Because the divers are at a depth of 25 meters, all work is undertaken according to strictly controlled diving residence times. Safety is always first, and no risks at any time is the guideline. Compressed air tools are used to tighten the nuts on the manhole bolts. They are fast and safe. Soon the first of the 12 hydrants is ready. About the same time, a start is made to the fixing in place of two dock cranes. The salvers do not want to take any risk of these cranes moving about uncontrollably as the dock comes up out of the water. The cranes are anchored into place with steel wire and T4 tackle. Colourful inspectors keep a sharp eye on the work. Weissmuller salvage divers have all undergone special training. They are also constantly retrained and tested for working efficiently underwater, often under very difficult circumstances, where visibility may be far worse than this. The work is on schedule, and the day approaches that a start can be made with the refloat operation. Everything is prepared on board the Perdana Sakti. Representatives of the Indian Navy now arrive with warnings as to safety of the dry dock. Drawings have again to be reviewed carefully. The salvage officer and the naval architect discuss the situation and decide to send divers back down for another look.
The tanks are inspected again, a time-consuming exercise, but one that may be essential for the success of the operation. On board, the diving supervisor guides and corrects the work of the inspecting divers as necessary. A standby diver is ready at all times if help is needed. The wing tanks are checked, and while at first sight they all look good, some little weaknesses are nonetheless uncovered. The diver is called back for discussion. Because the dock is about 20 years old, general deterioration and corrosion losses have been greater than we bargained for. Things are less less solid than we thought. This will be critical for safe pressurization. We discovered the center tanks were connected to the wing tanks by so-called ventilation holes. This means that in our original plan, the air would escape from the one to the other and we would lose control. So we've decided to change the roles of the tanks. The wing tanks will become the flotation tanks and the center tanks will be used for water ballast, deflection control and possible trimming. The two major challenges, the poor condition of the dock and the open connection between the center and wing tanks, are discussed in detail. One thing is clear as daylight, more pressurization equipment will be necessary to complete the project as envisaged. But this equipment is not easily found on the Andaman Islands. It is necessary to bring it in from Switzer Weissmuller's operation in Singapore by high-speed boat. Heavier compressors providing more air will be needed as more and larger tanks will have to be put under air pressure. With some electrical ingenuity, the Weissmuller salvage engineer has managed to get one of the dry docks cranes working. Grateful use will be made of this in the transfer of the gear to come. As evening falls, everything is on board. The following morning, a start is made on the new plan. Even after dark, Port Blair remains a busy place. Roadside traders push hard to make their last sale, with wheeling and dealing all part of the game. Sellers, large and small, review the day's takings. The following day, Weissmuller salvage divers get to work early. Twelve extra manhole covers have to be removed, but now on the wing tanks. They are all hoisted on board the Perdana Sakti and again converted to hydrants. In the same way as before, 25 centimeter holes are cut into them. In order to address occasional unexpected technical difficulties, Weissmuller salvage improvisation skills come into their own. In total, 12 new hydrants are made, varying in length from 40 to 80 centimeters. In the hold of the Padana Sakti is a huge resource of equipment that is regularly put to work in these sorts of salvage assignments. To be able to close the manholes hermetically, patch rubber packings are cut to size. As the preparation of the hydrants progresses, the divers immediately install them in place. At this point, no time can be lost, as the change in plan has brought a lot more work along with it.
One of the salvage divers checks the situation together with the diving supervisor. As a matter of contingency, the extra hydrants for the wing tanks are constructed in such a way that any overpressure which could damage the internal structure of the floating dock can be released. As the last of the new hydrants is assembled and installed, a start is made with pressurizing the tanks. Under the concerned eye of Navy specialists, the last checks are completed. The salvage officer explains what will happen. There are still some leaks and leaking pipes. We're providing air under pressure to the diver so he can test the pipes with his depth meter. If the air disappears, then we know the pipe leaks. There's a leak on that pipe we just saw. We must now cut out a section and plug it then it will be completely airtight. The diver investigates how he can best do the work. In the meantime, the equipment needed is prepared on deck. A colleague diver takes over as fatigue sets in. The tools needed are delivered by guideline the diver then entering the tank. We ask the salvage officer whether this work on the inside of sunken tanks is dangerous at these depths. No, it's basically not dangerous, but we have to control things tightly. We can see what the diver is doing and can coach him. We can often anticipate danger earlier than him and take evasive action as necessary. Our experience has reduced danger to a minimum. As a part of the Switzer Weissmuller safety management system, a decompression tank is held ready 24 hours a day. When all the tanks have been checked under pressure, the moment arrives when the wing tanks can be closed. Patch rubbers are lowered into the water to ensure a good seal on the manholes. Again, 12 in total. As the last one is closed and the diver returns safely aboard, the Weissmuller Salvage Dive Register records no less than 420 individual dives made so far. Preparations are in full force to move the Padana Sakti beyond the range of the floating dock. The specially made manifolds, one for starboard and one for port, are put in their place. Fire hoses are used to feed in the compressed air. They are compact, light and strong. And there are over two kilometers of them on board. Should be enough. The hoses are now carefully marked with the tank number to which they will have to be connected. They are unrolled and passed down to the support team on the surface. Hoses are connected to their manifolds. A color system clarifies work. Red for port, white for starboard.
This is how the hoses are connected to the hydrants already installed. When all the hoses are installed, the compressors are turned on. Firstly, the tanks are pressured, with the pressure in the tanks being monitored by manometers on the manifold. In one of the pre-programmed pressurizing sequences, each tank is blown almost empty, starting with the wing tanks visible here down to a pre-agreed level. Now, the valves on the wing tanks are sealed and the process continues with the center tanks. In this controlled way, careful consideration is given to the possible problem of deflection during refloating. This is the first phase of how the dock will be brought to the surface. Here and there, air is escaping. The divers check the situation and immediately take measures to seal the leaks. All Weissmuller salvage divers keep a wary eye on everything and stay in close contact with the salvage vessel. We're only losing air, starboard. Here we can clearly see the high water mark on the paint and what we have at low tide. That growth is easily 40 centimeters. The divers are happy with first results. They were a long time coming and took a fair amount of patience and hard work. Yeah. Yeah. In the traditional manner, the dock breaks the surface slowly but elegantly. It's been in the water quite a while. As soon as the salvage officer on board the Perdana Sakti gives clearance, a first visual inspection is made on board. One of the divers makes close-up checks. And wherever one looks, there is that thick layer of marine growth. It will be a major clean-up. Meanwhile, the refloat continues. The naval architect comes to take a look at what the salvage team has achieved so far. This is the moment that theory is translated into practice. The Indian Navy continues to keep an eye on things. Now that the first phase of the process, the refloating of the fore section, is almost complete, a start can be made on the second phase, the refloat of the aft section. 
A small leak in one of the air hoses is quickly and effectively sealed. Because the water in the bay is warm and rich in oxygen and nutrition, a huge amount of marine growth has attached itself in a short time to the dock. Barnacles, shells and seaweed are only the start. They will all need removing. The salvage officer still keeps tabs on all around him. Though the dock may be well out of water, it is not yet in safe condition. The tides are monitored constantly. They also play a key role in refloat calculations. An important visitor, the commander-in-chief responsible personally, comes to review progress and be briefed by the salvage officer. This is how, in the second phase, the aft section will be refloated. At the moment the aft section appears above the waterline, the refloat process takes on a different character. Water bubbles briskly out of all the holes in the dock and accommodation. The structure is lightened. The naval architect sounds just a little relieved when he tells his story. You see it coming up slowly and that's satisfying. We had to adapt the plan a couple of times and it was heavy work, but I think we will succeed. She's on her way. When no more pressurized air is needed, the compressors can be turned off and the dock is well out of the water, we know everything is safe and stable, then we can turn everything off. And if now we get problems with the compressors or something else, then the team will have another challenge on their backs. If accommodation can first be emptied and cleared, then we are sure there will be no more major difficulties. The powerful pumps installed at various locations in the accommodation further lighten the dock and reduce risks. Moving around the dock, one realizes how huge it is and what a tough exercise it has been for the Weissmuller salvage team. It takes another day to get the low-lying dock floor in the dry. The fire hoses lie afloat, having done their work. One of the delivery conditions was to bring the dock into an overall floating condition on an even keel with a draft of 1.8 meters. After that, deflection measurements would be made and reported to the Indian Navy. Bit of a cleanup, she'll be right as rain. Here, one sees above water what happens underwater when the tank is pumped dry and only air remains. The deck is cleared of serious fouling. Additional equipment is lifted on deck of the floating dock for purposes of conserving the interior machinery. 
The manholes of the wing tanks are opened and the water levels in the center tanks are checked. We approach the moment that the dock returns to its original condition. Representatives of the Indian Navy arrive for a first full inspection and are happy to comment on the work. The temperature is, I mean, it's warmer. And uh, it's come out and she looks very stable and nice. No, surprisingly, down below is only mud and nothing else. Wherever there is a closed this thing, there is no sunlight. I think, yeah. This is what it is explaining. I think all under, uh, internal yeah, compartments yeah. must be quite open. Only the external compartment, that too. As to the input and performance of Vais Miller Salvage, Commander Sunil Jain observes. Quite positive attitude. Very positive and uh, cooperative attitude with all, all Vice Muller staff, definitely. Conservation work is now in full progress. It includes washing all machinery in and outside with fresh water to remove salt. All machinery is then stripped before special chemicals are applied to prevent oxidation. All the time, taking care not to pollute the environment. The last step before the dock is returned formally to her owners. Thanks to the efforts of Weissmuller Salvers, a job that at first sight looked very iffy became reality. Redelivery of a sunken floating dry dock. Throughout the project, the most careful consideration was given to protecting the environment by the salvage team. And with floating dry dock FDN1 shortly back in service, that precious environment with its corals and fish stocks will be secured for its population years to come by the Indian Navy and its patrol vessels. With a little thanks to the men who travel the world with their special maritime skills. We know them as the Global Salvage Masters.